This is the Scottish Club Rugby Podcast. The Scottish Club Rugby Podcast. With Stuart Cameron and Dale Clancy. Hello and welcome to episode 29 of the Scottish Club Rugby Podcast and in the show this week we take a look back at what happened last Saturday in the League and Cup and also the Inter-District Championship which kicked off last weekend. As usual I'm joined by Dale Clancy and Dale let's begin with the one game in National 2 and the two games played in National 4. So National 2 it was uh, Berwick against Las Wade at Scremiston. Berwick hoping to go into 7th position. They needed a couple of points. They got just the one it was a losing bonus at home to their big rivals last week who got over the line yeah you know it's one of those games that there was very little to play for for both sides so it was good to see them both get a lot of points on the scoreboard but you know it would have been a great kind of end of the season for Berwick who for a lot of the the season we've been talking about them being in a battle with Aberdeen Grammar for relegation for them to be in a position where they could almost finish a little bit higher up the league would have been great for them but you know last week we're always going to come down to Scremerston as, as favourites they've had a, a few big games in the past few years as well those two sides but last week are a strong team and uh, yeah you'd be imagining that, that next season last week will be, be looking to kind of rebuild under Peter Wright again and, and go for another tilted promotion of course that result puts them into second position in the table just ahead of Falkirk who've got a couple of games left yeah, and one of them is playing each other. Mm. You know, that last Wade uh, Falkirk game is uh, is going to be an interesting game, you know, how they both approach it. A couple of weeks ago, it was a, it was a bigger game than what it is uh, now, but I think there's a little bit of bragging rights conference going into next season as well. You know, n- neither side will want to lose that one, but last Wade coming in with a little bit of momentum, and obviously there's, there's some Falkirk players, folk players involved in the Inter-District Championship. There's none from last Wade, I believe, are involved in the in the competition so you know they're able to get that bit of continuity and they'll be springing towards that Falkirk game with a a little bit of confidence Well in National 4 Garnock finally got over the line Um, it was quite interesting because uh, the SRU presentation party went along to Strathmore the week before I think it was and um, expecting to present the trophy Strathmore beat them by one point with the last kick of the game and uh, they took the trophy away again but they got it uh, last weekend 66 points to 7 against uh, Greenock Wanderers and uh, they will be in National 3 next season yeah, you know, you see on social media as well, like at Garnick, they're, they're a well-supported club, and I think most people are saying that they're one of those clubs in the up. And, you know, and it's funny, because you've got screeds and screeds of newspaper articles here, and I was looking at one from about a decade ago, and it was in a, a league where Mar and Orkney were towards the top of one of the divisions quite far down. You know, you look at where Mar are now, and, you know, Garnick are obviously building towards something that they think is, is going to be quite big, and they want to get themselves, you know, further up the pyramid and, and competing for honours higher up. So, yeah, they maybe had to wait a week, but I'm pretty sure that, you know, the, the success that they've they've achieved this season and, and certainly the, the celebrations uh, last weekend would have, been, uh, would have been enjoyed and they'll be there for years to come in their memories. Well, Strathmore were hoping to uh, stay in second position with a win over Ross High. That game was called off... Ross High couldn't get a team together, unfortunately, uh, which gave White Craigs the opportunity to go in front of them. And they did that against North Berwick, 35 points to 14. So White Craigs at the moment with uh, still three games to play uh, up to second position with 57 points. But it's all academic now with Garnet going up. Yeah, I think you know that the, the national campaigns are all done and dusted you know in the all divisions we know who's apart from obviously the playoffs the, the, the premiership but we know who's going up we know who's going down um, and, and we know what the lie of the land is going to be for the, the leagues next season so you know we're coming to the end of the, the league campaign which has been interesting I think the 10 team leagues has worked um, we've also obviously got the focus on the uh, on the cup competitions now and obviously the inter-district championship so it's a busy time and then bring on the sevens so no cup or league cup games played last weekend and in fact uh, the 6th of april is when we get the quarter finals the draws we made for that by the way alan glenn's against howe fife burham Muir will play newton stewart preston lodge against falkirk and sterling county against last wade now the one that screams out for me preston lodge versus falkirk that's going to be a good one preston lodge of course winning a promotion up to national two yeah i think that's the game that uh, does stand out um you know, of the of the other games, you probably do look at one of the teams as a, as a clear favourite, but because they're in different leagues and they've both been successful to a degree in their own divisions, you know, Preston Lodge obviously getting promotion from National 3 and Falkirk have, uh, have run Peebles and last Wade all the way to the end of the line for promotion from National 2. You know, that's one of those games that, yeah, you don't know how that's going to unfold, but obviously we've got 
another another week until the the quarterfinals come round. And one big point from PL could perhaps be, you know, the absence of their fly half Scott Clark, who's been playing mm-hmm. for Edinburgh District. So this is where that little bit of impact and that little bit of um, you know the, the interesting narrative comes in. You know, personnel and players not available. So yeah, I think you know you look at the league. The, the league cup, and I do think it's quite interesting because you've you've got the potential for a really interesting final, which I think that perhaps last season it wasn't the case. Um, I think that below the cup, the competitions were probably quite diluted. But you know, I would I'd be quite happy t- to be at, at Murrayfield and and watching a, a Falkirk last way final, or a, you know, like potentially a Howe Fife last way or Stirling County final. I think that you know they're, they're historic teams, good teams, and obviously that's um, it's entering the business stage of that competition. So that's happening on the sixth of April. Thirteenth of April will be the uh, quarter final, the one outstanding quarter final in the cup. That's Enbrackies against Heritz. Enbrackies obviously had a game on the Scotland Island weekend in Ireland, so uh, that was put back to the thirteenth of April and that's when the semi-final will be played between Hoyk and Curry. Obviously that's a that's a huge huge game um, and obviously in the, the, the current circumstances there's going to be a lot of focus on that on that fixture in particular so you know obviously we've got a, a lot of big games coming up with uh, Hoyk and Curry. We've got the, the cup semi so the top two teams essentially in, in Scottish club rugby one of them is going to fold one of them's got to go out the cup at the semi-final stage. Then we've got the Premiership final, and then obviously they've been drawn together at Melrose Sevens as well. So, which is the same day as the semi-final. Yeah, which is yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of teams go out in the park at, at, at Melrose, which is unfortunate in itself. Really, it's always been an impact on Melrose Sevens is is that the the league games and cup games sometimes do tail over a little bit which means that the, some players don't get an opportunity to, to run out at Melrose which for wee fat rugby players like myself was, was, a, was yeah it was one of the highlights of your rugby career was running out in front of a you know it was a packed Melrose stand you get scalped by Melrose after 12 and a half minutes 49 points to nil on TV and you get to go to the bar for the rest of it so <laughs> that's the, the highlights of your rugby career but you know it's sometimes the the teams are get slightly diluted but a lot of big games coming up between Hoyk and Curry. So it was the start of the Inter-District Championship on Saturday. The results were Glasgow and West 26, Caledonia Reds 22. So the holders going down to uh, a late uh, try, I think it was, by uh, Glasgow and West to get over the line. And Edinburgh uh, 24, the South 27 at halftime. It was 24-6, a real game of two halves, the old cliche. But it really did uh, uh, reflect that because that wind was very, very strong. Yeah, it was. I think the the wind in that game, um, in particular the one at Stony Hill, the the wind was really strong, which I, I'm thinking back to the game that obviously we covered. There was a lot of things that, that both sides done really well. I think Edinburgh District came out and played rugby in the right areas with the wind, utilised it well, um, really stifled the South um, in terms of their attack. The South at times used the wind pretty well. Um, they were kicking high balls and getting a chase on and, and being able to use the, the, the wind to their advantage at some stages, but they just weren't, they had no end product. They were... Their scramble defence was poor, their organisation was pretty poor. Second half, make a couple of changes in the front row, I think they had an immediate impact. And then the likes of players like Callum Rennick and Dalton Redpath coming on made a huge impact as well. It'd be interesting to see who won the toss. I think that if you've got that bench emptied and you're going into a wind, I don't think that has as big an impact. The wind was so strong, it had a factor on where you were going to be playing the game. There was a lot of luck on the side of the South, but you've got to remember they they came back from 24 points to 6 down at half time. You know, to turn that round and score 21 un- unanswered points in the second half and hold out to the end as well. And I must admit, I was wrong. Watching the highlights, I think I was trying to find the bit where I did think that it would have been a penalty try. I think I did find it and I was having a little look and I think I, I might have been wrong. But, you know, there's there's a bit of luck, but there was a bit of game management there from, from the coaching staff and the players. And I think the South... You know, the, almost the strength and depth of that squad shone through. Me and Robin were saying before the game, the South had a stronger squad, and it and it showed in the end. I said to Robin, I think they had a stronger starting lineup. So after 60 minutes, they they probably showed that. But in the end, it's an 80 minute game, and in in, or 89 minutes, <laughs> as a case of the weekend. But the South held on and and, and shone through. So, you know, and obviously the other game. Glasgow against Cali I think it does highlight how tight this inter-district championship is going to be and before when it's knockout rugby like it was last year you play one game you sweep it under the carpet and then you move on to like another knockout game a final there's not too much you can leave out in the field because you need to win that game whereas in these games you look they've they've all got 
points in some degree in the championship, which is really interesting because you look at the fixtures and you look at what, what the scores have been. Either of those teams can beat any other on any given day. And if it comes down to luck, decision making by players, maybe a good strategy from a from a coach or a management team, that could be the difference between it. So I think that's what makes this weekend's round of fixtures so important because you've got the two teams who won last weekend, um, they're going to be playing each other, and then the two teams that lost playing each other. So the two teams who obviously won last weekend are playing each other, and then the two teams that lost last weekend are playing each other, and you don't want to go on a run where you lose two games in the bounce because you're probably at the championship. So between Cali and Edinburgh this weekend, they know that they need to win. They they know that they need to get that win, and and for the other game, it's a matter of trying to take take advantage and, and build a bit of momentum because you could create yourself a little bit of a buffer if results go your way in the last weekend. So Glasgow and the South put themselves in a great position going into round two whereas Edinburgh and Cali know what they need to do, but the, the benefit that they have is they've got some points on the board and, and the South weren't able to pick up a full five points. So, yeah, it's an, it's interesting. Great opening weekend for inter-district rugby. I think that I've heard a lot of people say that the level isn't quite there or the squads aren't as strong as they could be. There's maybe elements of that that are quite true, but you're going out to watch a product, you're going out to watch a, a, a region play a region, and I think that is the that's where the excitement lies for me. Watching the South go to Edinburgh, turn it round and, and escape with a narrow victory after getting loads of pressure it was you know it was a great rugby game it was really really good and it did, like some people in the press were also saying it was a bit of a damp squib in terms of a spectacle I, I think quite the opposite it was an intriguing 89 minutes at Stony Hill in terms of the way that the, the rugby panned out and I dare say that this weekend is going to be exactly the same Glasgow and West will be a strong physical outfit that the South will have to um, put up with and I think they're, I, I think the makeup of their squad will probably signal that they want to come out and hit the ground running at the start as opposed to last weekend but you know the other two teams it's going to be a, a little bit of a clash of styles I think Cali like to throw the ball about a bit more and Edinburgh we've we seen at the weekend past how physical that they are with the ball in hand so it's going to be a, a really intriguing weekend Edinburgh really did well in the set pieces didn't they again I mean they, they knocked back the, uh, the the south scrum on more than a couple of occasions yeah but I think that's an area that they targeted you know they were they were on the the receiver end of a how can last season the, the squads themselves the south in particular didn't change too much they had nine players in the starting lineup who started that game Edinburgh only had three three of those players that were in the starting lineup were on the bench so it shows that they've completely changed that front row um, and they did target it. I think having the likes of um, you know Badenhorst in behind as well does help I thought Jake Mills was really good in the loose as well they alluded to it before the game as well uh, McCulloch was saying that obviously they realised that up front that's probably where they got dominated they didn't I was thinking back to the game there wasn't really many periods at Netherdale last year um, in May where, where Edinburgh had the ball if your forwards don't get the upper hand then they're not going to be able to get any you know the backs aren't going to, going to get any possession or you're not going to be able to play rugby in the right areas so the strategy and the alignment of that Edinburgh team was chalk and cheese from last year but they did target the set piece and I think you know it initially first five minutes the driving mall was effective even when they were defending five metres away from the south line they were able to rip it round and be able to, and able to score a try I think their forwards certainly in the first 40 minutes had the upper hand on the south but you know, a couple of changes in the second half and it kind of steadied the ship slightly and it gave the South more possession, more composure and a little bit more confidence to go and attack that Edinburgh side. But yeah, credit where credit's due. I think Edinburgh fronted up in the forwards. And you do wonder if they had a few more of their line outs in key areas, what would have happened? Would they have been able to perhaps uh, escape with the victory? And I think it's exciting as well, isn't it? The fact that you've got a beginning, a middle and an end over a three week period. It's a lot better than last year. It's it's because it's only four teams. It makes it really intriguing because every game carries a lot of significance. Um, but if you do get on a bit of a run at the start, if you're able to certainly win your opening game, it gives you confidence for the second. And if you can pick that up, you know that destiny is in your own hands, pretty much. You know, so the way that it's aligned this season, and I think as well the way that it is in the calendar, I'm quite happy with it where it is. But you know, it's it, it makes for an interesting campaign. So, yeah, bring on this weekend. I think it's going to be another good weekend of district rugby. So, Glasgow and the West at the top with the maximum five points. South have four, Edinburgh District two, and Caledonia Reds have one. So, all the teams scored something, as you said. And um, let's go back to the game which was played at Stony Hill and hear from Kirk Ford, who was the, the South man of the match in that game. And before that, captain of Edinburgh, Charlie Brett. It's a bittersweet 
kind of feeling for the boys. Um, I feel like it is something that got one one that got away from us. Uh, the win was a massive factor, um, but I thought a credit to our boys. We stuck in. It's always going to be difficult in the second half with the wind against you and, uh, and a South team, you know, getting the rocket probably at half time. Um, but the stuff we played in the first half was awesome. Um, and we've, we're trying to build a foundation of a new Edinburgh. And I think we found a, a strong identity today. Um, and it takes us quite positives into, into next week. We just, we just said, let's play. Not play too much, but make sure we play in the right half. And, um, and I thought we did that. The, some, of the, some of the skills that were brought, put on show were awesome. But it is what it is in that second half. We've, uh, we'll, we'll just build from it from, from next week. It's a massive honour to be able to, to represent your, your district and even captain it. So it's, it's been awesome so far with all the boys. Everyone's bought into it this year, uh, probably more than, more than last year. Um, and that's, I think you know, it's a great thing to bring back and it's a good spectacle for, for what Club Rugby's got to show for the next level. At Curry, we've got two boys with Cali as well, um, sticking their hand up there. And like it's, it's a class thing to be able to achieve if, as well as getting into your, your first 15 of your side, being able to push on to district level and, and so on and so forth for the next coming years. I think it's brilliant. So. Um, no, it's, it's a great a great addition back in and like I love that today and I know the rest of the boys did even though it's a, one of those bittersweet ones to finish with. It's it's not over, like that's the one thing I did say in the in the huddle there as well. We'll build on it on Tuesday into Thursday and we'll go again against Cali at home, which is really good. We've got two home games, so no, it's, it's a great thing. Two points, we'll take it and we'll go into next week hungry. Aye, aye, we said at half time we were going in, that was easy, a 20 point win we thought like, so we, d we never really played how we wanted first half, we never really managed the game especially into the wind, so I would just thought try and pin them second half, play a bit more rugby. Um, and I luckily we were on the, the right right end of the scoreboard at the end. Okay, we thought it was easy a 20 point wind when we were in at half time, so uh, we knew the conditions were going to be like this, so uh, thankfully we we just done enough in the first and second half and we, we just got over the line. We were saying up before the game and that this is the kind of culmination of the season for a lot of boys, so it's uh, it's brilliant to have it back after after a few years you not know, having it and especially having a full full championship again so aye, everybody's excited to, to keep going in the next couple of weeks so to this week then and uh, obviously top of the bill based on the first week is the fact that the south have their only home match it's uh, taking place at pointer park in kelso and they're going to be playing glasgow and uh, the intrigue about this one is the two teams haven't met this century yeah i think that's you know obviously last season the south played edinburgh district and then obviously played cali reds in the final at Braidholm and obviously the game that, that missed us was the, the, the Glasgow uh, game so going into this weekend it's it's a bit of uncharted territory for everybody which is um, I think off the back of last weekend's results as well makes it that much more intriguing and interesting because we really don't know what to expect I think that of the balance of things I think all the squads are really strong this season um, so it's just about approaching it the right way for both of these sides I think it'll be physical you know you look at the makeup of the squad and there's obviously not a huge air influence um, obviously national one but you know there's a lot of a lot of good Hawks players in there a lot of good Mar players in Glasgow's team so you know they'll they'll be trying to play to their strengths obviously get a bit of ascendancy up front in the forwards uh, really target that set piece be accurate at the line out and it'll give them a platform to try and release some of their, their exciting backs that they've got you know obviously Sturgeon was, was playing on Saturday pulling the strings an experienced you know playmaker for for Mar but obviously representing Glasgow uh, Glasgow and West so there's a, there's a lot of really good players in that Glasgow side and part of the problem that they had last year I think Edinburgh and themselves was the fact that they didn't have as many good players across the whole squad than perhaps what Cali and, and the South did. That's completely changed in less than 12 months, but all the squads are really strong. So the South, I think, will, will, will go strong. They will they'll go with a, a, a really physical team. I think you'll probably see more of a hike influence in it as well. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a, a really intriguing game this weekend. I think Glasgow, I think coming to this, we're nothing to lose. Um, I think that the pressure's all in the South. They were finalists last year. They have probably led the way in a lot of aspects with district rugby so you know Glasgow will be wanting to come down and put their name on the map so we don't know what to expect but I think the one thing we do know that we're going to get is a, a really physical game at Pointer on Saturday and I think it's who can play rugby in the right areas and make make the least mistakes and I think that's going to be what sees the, the team out on top. Well yesterday I spoke to Bruce McNeil who is the player coach involved with the south of Scotland let's see what he had to say. Bruce, first of all, reaction to the game that we've just had. I mean, South got out of jail free in the end, didn't they? Absolutely. Um, definitely the result we're looking for, potentially not the, the whole performance. Uh, certainly second half was, uh, 
was was more pleasing than the first half. Obviously, the <coughs> the elements played a big part in it, but um, I think we showed tremendous amount of character in terms of <coughs> belief and, and no panicking at half time and knowing that we had it in a locker to make sure that you know we controlled it and didn't panic. Knew that we didn't have to score straight away, and, and boys, to their credit, stuck to the structure that that they were given and, and implemented the game plan very well. Very surprised to uh, leak four tries in the first 20 minutes. Quality teams can do that to you and as a coaching group we sat down and we looked at it and they're fixables, um, you know, don't really worry us in terms of, you know, how do we fix that, we know how to fix it. Um, so, yeah, listen, it's disappointing but ultimately we can fix it. And also, of course, they, you kept them from scoring for 60 minutes, which was uh, very, very pleasing indeed. And, and in the second half, you just missed out on getting that fourth try. There were chances which uh, could have turned into tries. Andrew Mitchell's being disallowed. That looked a perfectly good try to me. But um, you did get three other good ones in more or less the same part of the, uh, as the pitches they scored. Yeah, I think that was probably one of the disappointing things in the first half. We didn't take our chances. We, we had to work really hard. Um, into the wind to get into their, their red zone and when we did, we didn't execute as well as we could have. Um, so that was you know, it was disappointing from our half. But yeah, listen, there, there was positives and negatives to take out of the game, but we need to make sure we just get back on the training field and, and luckily enough we've got another game to, to, to right the wrongs. And that's the good thing about this championship, it's bang, bang, bang. Yeah, it is. it's actually quite good, you know, you're starting to get a, a real connection with the boys and, and we can um, put a bit of meat in the bones in training and whatnot and it's nice to do a bit of analysis and uh, work on the, the work-ons and, and, you know, praise the, the positives and make sure that, um, you know, we keep getting better and better every week. What's the feeling then within the camp, you know, straight after the whistle, you in your huddle, what, was it a sense of relief and we can do a lot better than this? I think so, yeah, obviously, you know, um, at this level, um, little things have big implications and I think that, you know, them getting held up, you know, listen, don't get me wrong, they score that in 80 minutes and, and we're in a world of pain, there's no two ways about it, you can't sugarcoat it, but at this level, you know, we live to fight another day and hopefully we can, we can learn from that and make sure that the result doesn't paper over the cracks that we've got, we know that there's work-ons there to be had, but that's our job as coaches to make sure that, you know, we get that right for, for Glasgow. Very powerful scrum they had and uh, they pushed you off several times. Any concerns there over the set piece? Yeah, we need to be better, um, as is, you know, all over the park. We need to be better sort of thing, but um, we've been limited to what we can do in terms of set piece and, you know, with, with games and boys kind of managing game time and what we can do in training and stuff. So, yeah, listen, they got the upper hand there. There's no two ways about it, but... Um, we'll take that as a personal thing and, and we'll make sure that we look to get better uh, in the coming weeks on that. Certainly when the uh, substitutes came on, there, there seemed to be a big impact when that happened. Uh, it was like a, a fresh team almost on the pitch. Yeah, I think that's the quality. You know, that's the the quality we have in the, in the south is is having a, a really good and strong bench, and we take the pick the team accordingly, knowing that you know we might have to change a picture of the game uh, as the as the game goes on. And I thought the boys came off the bench and done tremendous well. They knew their roles and knew what they had to do, um, and they got us in the right areas. And and you know, ultimately, when we did get a chance in the second half, we took most of them. And as coaches, it's difficult to prepare for specific games because, uh, you know, by the whole nature of the fact that it's first time out for, for everyone, there's not a lot that you can go on, particularly when, you know, the, the teams are made up of uh, players from different clubs. Absolutely. Listen, we knew that, that, was, that it was never going to be the same result as what it was at Netherdale. That was never going to happen again. They're a proud bunch, Edinburgh, and they've, they've bought into this um, this district stuff really well and, and Bob McKillop's a quality coach and, and it showed, you know, they, they were well drilled and they, they've bought into playing for Edinburgh and we knew that was going to be the case. So, yeah, that was a difficult one because you can't do any analysis but you, you do know the players fairly well so you know where the threats are and um, it's just, you know, how they were going to play was, was into the unknown. Luckily for us, as we say, we adapted in the second half and we were able to counteract that. You know, going into the Glasgow game, we've got a bit of analysis on them, so we can ha look at that and hopefully get a get ahead before you know kick off on Saturday. Kenny Differenthold is the coach uh, for Mar, and he's in charge of the the Glasgow team, so you'll have an idea of the way he coaches. We need to control the controllables, and we know what what Glasgow will bring in. Um, as I say, we can look at their game, but ultimately we have to focus on us, and we have to focus on getting better, set piece wise, controlling the games, territory, 
and we need to make sure that week on week we get better because I'm sure the other teams will as, as they start to gel and play a bit more together. So, listen, Glasgow will do what Glasgow will do, but we just need to make sure we get our fundamentals right and make sure that you know we play better than we did last week. The luxury we have here is we have got a, a big squad of quality and we can change personnel on, on the opposition and how Marty and, and Chegg feel in terms of how the game might go. We might pick guys that's better suited for one game than another so I'm sure that the guys that, that do come in will be champing at the bit and, and you know slightly grieved that they, they didn't play last week and they'll have a point to prove. This is a historic meeting because you didn't play Glasgow last year which means we haven't actually played as the south of Scotland against the Glasgow side uh, this century so a lot at stake. There's a lot at stake every time you wear the south jersey relevant to who you're playing sort of thing so um, yeah that's a, that's a fair start to be had but ultimately you know they're going to be good we know that. Listen we're, we're at Poinder we're hoping for a big big home support from, from the, the borders and ultimately we want to make sure that we put on a good performance and, and get the win um, for, for the pain support. And I think it is going to be a huge crowd here. Yeah, well, I hope so. If I'm being honest, at Musselburgh, there wasn't um, there wasn't much of an atmosphere there. You know, you kind of sugarcoat it. It was what it was, and don't get me wrong, the conditions played a part, and and you know, and whatnot, in, in terms of how the game panned out. But we're looking to make sure that you know, I know Kills Rugby Club's putting in a lot of work behind the scenes to make sure that. We get as much support as we can and it's our job as coaches and players to make sure that you know we reward them with, with a performance. And in charge of the Glasgow and District side is uh, our old friend, the head coach of Mar, Kenny Differenthal. Once all the clubs had submitted their names of their players that they wanted put forward for the districts, myself, Stephen, Thomas and Jamie sat down. I think we had about 70, just over 70 names to try and pick us a 32-man squad from. So, yeah, it was, quite, it was quite difficult trying to narrow it down because there's lots of quality players out there between the four of us trying to narrow it down as well as um, watching quite a few games to see individuals that were nominated that we didn't know much about. And so after we had narrowed it down to 41, 42, we watched a few more games and then narrowed it from there. 32. Um, that's how we came across the magic number of 32 squad members. And yeah, I think we've managed to get a very balanced squad, which is really pleasing. I think last year's squad was a little bit disjointed just because of the Super 6 guys being away on Super 6 duty, etc. Whereas this, this year seems to be a lot less guys e either signing too early or getting their Super 6 contracts extended, etc., etc. So um, it seems to have been a little bit easier this year with players in the Super 6. Saturday, really pleased with our performance as much as we made a few errors and probably left a few points out there. I thought we played reasonably well in spells um, with one week's prep. I think the boys did really well. Um, a lot of lads putting their names up at training. Um, for selection, so selection's been tough again. Um, but then again, uh, the boys that played well at the weekend also, also put their, na their names in the hat. So, yeah, it's been tricky, but it's a great problem to have. Um, looking forward to the to the weekend uh, at Kelso's ground. It'll be another tough challenge, a slightly different challenge to what uh, Caledonia posed. But we're all looking forward to it, and looking forward to a busy day out. So a quick look at the other game then. It's uh, the two losers effectively from the first, but it, they could easily have been the, the two winners as well. So we've got Caledonia Reds travelling once again to um, Raven Place this time to meet Edinburgh. Yeah, I think it's, uh, again, it's, it's it's the same conversation as the game before. You know, inter-district rugby, it's, it's really hard to call. We spoke about the challenges that Cali have in terms of the, the makeup of their squad. And to have two away games probably just adds that little bit more pressure to them. Um, but I was really impressed with Edinburgh last week. I think that, you know, the way that they, they played with the kind of two playmakers, with Brett and Clark both acting as first receiver, the, the pace that they've got on the wings as well, and the physicality up front, they've got a really good makeup of a, a really successful and uh, competitive squad. So I've not seen too much of Cali, but they're they're not the reigning champions for nothing. They're they're not too dissimilar as to the squad that they had last last year, and they've got a lot of players who know 
a lot of these Edinburgh players pretty well in terms of the the clubs that they've been playing at and the level that they've been playing at. So I think that's where Cali do well to fly under the radar because they are a little bit more piecemeal than, than anybody else. But the the physical aspect that Edinburgh will bring will be the thing that Cali will have to deal with to thwart. If they're able to get a, the ball on a dryish day and able to fling the ball about and stretch them and try and get that bit of width in the game, then Cali could find a bit of joy. But Obviously, this Edinburgh side are, are a physical, physical team and both sides will be wanting to bounce back, especially Cali. Being able to pick up points in the opening weekend, you know, obviously they got one, Edinburgh got two. Either side even are able to pick up a victory in this game. It sets up a brilliant weekend for the final weekend because we still don't know where the championship's going to go. So, you know, it's 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 a huge weekend for those two sides, probably even more so than, uh, than Glasgow in the south because momentum's on their side and they've got a win in, under their belt. Neither of these sides do, so they'll be doing everything they can to try and get a victory this weekend and breathe a bit of life back into their campaign. And looking at the fixtures for this weekend, apart from the Inter-District Championship, there's a match on Friday night, Strathmore at home to Dunfermline. That kicks off at 7.45 in National 4, and a chance for Strathmore to go back above White Craigs again into second spot. On the Saturday, National 2, it's uh, the game we mentioned earlier, Last Wade against Falkirk. National 3, Orkney against Alan Glens and in National Forts, Murrayfield Wanderers against White Craigs and Stewartry will play Ross High. And uh, that's just about it for today. We'll be back with another podcast next Thursday. And of course, we'll be looking at the Inter-District Championship after round two. Don't forget, we're on Rugby Radio for two days running uh, this weekend. Friday night, Border League action with Hoyk facing Melrose and Jed Forrest against Gala. That's on air at 7pm. And interestingly enough, Hoyk, Melrose and Gala still in with a chance of winning a title this year. And on Saturday at 2.30, full commentary and coverage of the South versus Glasgow and West taking place at Poinder Park. That's on rugbyradio.co.uk. Until next week, from Dale and me, bye for now. (laughs) 